Prime Minister, you said before your budget, by sharing the load, we lighten the load. Mm -hmm. Now, the truth of this budget is the load falls heaviest on the poorest, on the sickest, on those least able to bear the load. Where is the fairness in well, this budget? Well, everyone plays their part. Uh, high income earners uh, pay the deficit levy. Uh, members of parliament take a pay freeze and everyone will pay fuel excise indexation. So I think the load is fairly shared because that's the Australian way. But Fran, let's talk about why this is happening. This is all happening because we were living beyond our means. The former government gave us the sixth biggest deficits in our history. It was debt and deficit stretching out as far as the eye can see. We're not doing this because we are somehow political sadomasochists. We are doing this because it is absolutely necessary for the long-term welfare of our country. You get to make the choices. That's why you're saying you're doing it. You get to make the choices about what you do. Mm -hmm. And you talk then about everybody bearing the load. But if you drill down into the numbers, there was a, an example this week of a distribution, a, a, pair, a single mother actually, on $45,000 a year with one child. This budget was going to cut, cost her around $6,500, uh, sorry, around $2,690. You said, as we heard there, this will cost you your contribution around $6,500. You earn 11 times more than this woman, but you pay two and a half times the contribution. How is that fair? I, I just want to get back to the fact that we could not just sit here and do nothing, because to do nothing would be to rob the future. It would be to make our children and grandchildren pay for our excesses or the excesses of the former government. So doing nothing was not an option. Now let's look at, 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 at the precise issue you raised. I don't have front of mind the figures for people on $45,000, but if you look at a, a sole income family uh, with one child under six on $30,000, even after these changes, that family will continue to get almost $19,000 from the taxpayer. So I think the fair go principle, which is very important for our country, continues in this budget. What we also want to do though, Fran, is encourage people to have a go. We do have to reduce unsustainable expenditure. We do have to reduce what's been described as middle class welfare if all of us are going to prosper in the years ahead. Sure, but again it comes down to who bears the load. When we uh, put out the notice that you're going to be on the program, we've had a few mm -hmm. uh, letters and calls from pensioners unhappy. Mm -hmm. One pensioner particularly unhappy at you cutting the pensioner education supplement or payment. Another very unhappy, or several very unhappy about you cutting the pensioner bonus. Why are you picking on pensioners well, in this budget? We're not picking on anyone. but well, They feel we, like you're picking on them. Well, we, all, we said pre-election uh, that the low income bonus would go. Uh, we said pre-election that the a school kids bonus would go. You said pre-election no change to pensions. And, and there are no changes to pensions uh, Well that's in this not how they feel it because they were getting these payments and now they're not going to be getting these payments. But, but the, the low income bonus, we were quite upfront with people before the election that that was going to go and we were also quite upfront Fran that we would get the budget back under control. You might remember the mantra, it was stop the boats, repeal the carbon tax, build the roads of the 21st century and get the budget back under control. So people, I think, were on notice that we were going to do what was necessary to ensure that we were not being a burden on our children and grandchildren. I wonder how you think, though, that people were on notice that they weren't going to receive cuts to their pensions or they weren't going to see uh, cuts to health or cuts to education when you said there would be no cuts to health, there would be no cuts to education. You said it over and over again. Why did you think you could get away with saying that if, if but, you weren't but, going to deliver that? But Fran, again, uh, we have a very serious problem here, a problem where we were living beyond our means and the first duty uh, of government is not to do what's easy but to do what's right and necessary for our country and we could not go on running up massive debts for our children and grandchildren to pay. That would be a form of intergenerational theft. Now you ask about health and education. Uh, we promised that there would be no reductions over the forward estimates. Uh, what's happened is that the first of the out years has now come into the forward estimates and we never said that we were going to maintain Labor's pie-in-the-sky promises 
uh, in the out years. We never said that. Uh, and all these claims of massive cuts to health and education, none of that money was ever in the budget. And what we've said is that there will be a slower rate of growth in what were the out years than Labor promised. I think you've got a problem, though, in terms of trust. I mean, you are saying now, I think what you're saying is that the promise to restore the budget was always paramount. Mm. But I don't think that everybody heard all those other promises thought that. And so now, how do we know in the future what to believe when you say things and what not to believe? Well, um, I, I know that uh, people hear different things. Uh, someone can say well, something and, 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 pe and, and people hear uh, different things. But we, we constantly talked about Labor spending like a drunken sailor. Uh, it was always obvious uh, that we were going to have to rein back unsustainable spending. We constantly talked about Labor indulging in a cash splash with borrowed money. And now we've done what is necessary. Now, look, we could have continued to try to fool people and say, you, and say, you don't have to change. Um, but that would, frankly, uh, have been pretending to people uh, that our country could somehow uh, go on living on borrowed money. You cannot endlessly live on borrowed money and that's what our country had been doing for the six years of the, of the Labor government. And I will move on in a moment because I know you've been asked about the broken promises a lot this week. But before I do, I just want to, just following on from what you mm. said there, play back to you something you said on ABC Radio before the election. Let's have a look. I've seen the disaster that this government has created for itself by saying one thing and doing another. And, John, I don't want to be like that. I really don't. And if we do win the election and we immediately say, oh, uh, it, we got it all wrong, we've now got to do all these different things, we will instantly be just as bad as the current government has been. And I just refuse to be like that. With respect, Prime Minister, you are being like that. Well, that's in the end for the people to judge, Fran. Uh, but I believe that we have fundamentally kept faith with the promises that we made pre-election. Yes, I accept that the deficit levy will impact on the top 3% of taxpayers. Yes, I accept that the fuel excise indexation will cost in the first year the average family 40 cents a week. I accept all of that. But we did say that we were going to get the budget back under control and I believe that this was what the people of Australia elected us to do. If I'm wrong, uh, they will cast their votes accordingly at the next election. But why would I be doing this? Why would I be <coughs> exp exposing myself, Fran, to a world of political pain? Expending if I your didn't political think, capital. Why, why would I be exposing myself? Why would my colleagues be exposing themselves and ourselves to a world of political pain if we didn't think it was absolutely necessary for the long-term good of our country? Let's go to some of the measures. As I say, all budget about choices. You've walked away from the agreement with the states and territories over funding schools and funding hospitals into the future to the tune of $80 billion. It's quite clear in the budget. You say you want grown-up adult states. What's grown-up and adult about breaking this agreement with the states with no warning? Well, we said pre-election that we were not bound in the out years. We explicitly said time and time again pre-election uh, that we were bound by the forward estimates. We weren't bound by the out years. Now, of course, the first of the out years has come into the forward estimates and we've been totally up front. We've said the money will continue to increase, but it will increase at a slower rate than before. $80 billion less is written in the budget papers. <laughs> the states say they've got a signed agreement yeah. and they are shocked. Or are they feigning shock? Well, look, uh, um, I'm not going to run a commentary on the states. They're running what, one what, on you right now. What, what, I, what I am saying is that what we have done is precisely, precisely what we said we would do before the election. We said we would honour uh, the then government's commitments over the then forward estimates. We said we weren't bound uh, by their pie-in-the-sky promises for the out years. We said it was unsustainable. We said it was undeliverable and we're not going to try to deliver it. But you also said we're a unity ticket on Gonski and there's no for difference between years. Kevin Rudd and myself when it comes to school funding. For four years. Do you think people heard the four years? Well, look, uh, we always said, 
and this was the subject of argy bargy during the election, if you'll remember, Fran, uh, we were accused constantly by Labor during the election of not continuing the Gonski funding. They said this pre-election... What about the 50 they're right, for hospitals? And they're right. Well, again, we said we would only be bound uh, over the then forward estimates, and the first of the out years has now come into the budget. So what happens now then to the schools and hospitals? What happens to those national agreements to lift standards of, well, of treatment and schooling? No. Well, a a again, Fran, let's get back to the problem. The problem is that we were living beyond our means uh, and we cannot keep spending money that we don't have. We cannot keep mortgaging the future. We cannot keep ripping off our children and our grandchildren and this government won't do that. Now, we also said pre-election, uh, and I've repeated that regularly since, that we would have a federation white paper and that would be the opportunity for the Commonwealth and the states to sit down and work out what's going to happen in three years' time. So we're you not just pre-empted that, though. We're, Why we're, didn't we're you not, wait for the white paper? We're, we're, we're not talking about um, next week or next month or even next year. We're talking about changes in three years' time. We've got an enormous amount of time to sit down and work things out. But what we're not going to do is continue unsustainable spending with borrowed money. That would be wrong. That would be an offence against the future. You've also said that the states should run the schools and hospitals. Mm -hmm. They run them, they should pay for mm -hmm. them, they should fund them. <coughs> but you're mm. taking away this $80 billion. So how should the states raise this money? Should they raise it from the states, they, the, the taxes they have, the, the gambling taxes, the payroll taxes, the stamp duties? Is that, should they lift those? Well, Fran, this $80 billion was never in any budget. It was an unsustainable promise for the out years made by a government that knew it was never going to have to deliver. So are you saying then, as you look forward, as Prime Minister of this country, mm -hmm. you think we can do um, better in our schools and hospitals without that money? You can be a Prime Minister, or are you happy to be Prime Minister of a country that ha has different standards of uh, hospital care and different standards of school education in different states? Well, I think we can We can't be... have everything without the money, can we? Well, money isn't everything, Fran, and this is part of the problem. Uh, over the years we've thought that the only solution uh, to school problems and to health problems was more money. Now, money's important, no doubt about that, but are you really saying, Fran, that we can't be more efficient in schools? That no, we but can't be $80 more billion dollars is a lot of efficiency. But, but <laughs> that money was never in any budget. It was a pie-in-the-sky promise by a Labor government that knew it wouldn't be around to deliver on it. The states are meeting this afternoon. They say that money was in the agreements they all signed with the Commonwealth and they want you to stick to it. They say if, they don't, if you don't stick to it, then how else are they going to get this money? Are you considering giving them a share of Commonwealth raised income tax? Um, Fran, we always said that we weren't bound by those agreements in the out years and the first of the out years has now come onto the budget and we've said to the states, we will continue to increase your funding, uh, but not at the same unaffordable rate that Labor was promising. So we've just been absolutely upfront with the states and we've now got three years uh, to sit down and have a mature adult discussion about this and work out what the best way forward is. Should a bigger, broader GST be part of that discussion? Well, look, that's uh, a matter for the states. Um, I don't Do you propose, have a view? I, I don't propose... Uh, changing the GST at all because the GST is a state tax. The revenue all goes to the states. It's a federal it tax, be... but the revenue goes to the states. Under the, the legislation as it is, all states would have to ask. Mm -hmm. Now, at the moment, they're not going to do that, probably because three of them are facing election mm -hmm. within the next eight months or so. But if all the states came to you and said, Prime Minister, we need you to increase the GST, would you agree to that? Well, you're asking me a hypothetical and I don't yeah. normally respond to hypotheticals, Fran. Let's, let's wait and see uh, what happens here. Um, but we've got three years and this idea that there is some kind of an emergency uh, because things are going to have to be adjusted in three years' time is, is not right. But I'm looking forward to having lots of discussions with the states uh, over coming months and years and I am absolutely confident that at the end of those discussions we will continue to have good schools and good hospitals and we'll have a better federation as well. And higher taxes? Well, my objective is lower taxes. That's my objective. Uh, I, I didn't come into politics to put taxes up. 
I came into politics to bring taxes down. They should be lower, simpler and fairer and that's what will happen under I'm this coalition I'm glad you mentioned government. emergency because the states are unhappy and one state minister, a New South Wales state health minister, is already threatening to open the emergency wards in our hospital mm -hmm. to GPs so people can go there, not pay the co-payment and the Commonwealth bears the, uh, the brunt of that through the, the, the Medicare rebate. Well, look, it's that's... going to be chaos. Uh, no, I, I think that if, uh, if, if that's... That sounds like it's a creative response by the states. You like that idea? Well, look, um, the states are perfectly entitled to do what's open to them as a sovereign government. And uh, I know in different states in the past, uh, different states have taken advantage of the Medicare arrangement to deliver what they thought were better treatments for their patients, and that's fair enough. Uh, Prime Minister, it now goes to the Senate. The Senate will be a challenge for you, this one mm -hmm. and the next one. You know that, and you've said some horse trading will go on. Where are you prepared to horse trade? Well, what we aren't prepared to do is to uh, sell our kids down the river by continuing to spend way beyond our means. Uh, uh, what we have uh, laid out for the Australian people this week in the budget is a careful, considered, sensible path back to surplus and uh, we're not walking away from that. Obviously uh, we're happy to talk about different details with minor parties and independents in the Senate but they've got to accept that we are the government, we were elected to run the country, uh, we've got to make tough decisions as well as easy decisions, we can't keep this cash splash with borrowed money going and uh, let's have that discussion. One of the toughest decisions and Labor will oppose this, and so will the Greens, I understand, is the decision to keep young people under 30 off the dole mm -hmm. for six months um, if they're not earning or learning, if mm -hmm. they're not training. People all across the community regard that as very, very harsh. Can you imagine how those people are going to live if they aren't capable of learning, if they aren't capable of going to training because they, their life is too cha chaotic or shambolic or there's many reasons why. What are they going to do? Well, we're not giving up on those people and just saying, OK, here's a cheque, uh, we're going to forget about you. Uh, we're not doing that at all. Uh, there will be services that will work with uh, people to try to ensure that they are either earning or learning. And the high <coughs> highly disadvantaged people will continue to get access to unemployment benefits, but work-ready youngsters won't be allowed to leave school and go onto the dole. They just won't be, Fran. But you can't, you can't stop them leaving we school. Can't. They will. They will, but, but, because some people's lives are not anything like your life or my life. They will leave school. How do they live? Well, if they leave school and they don't get a job uh, and they're work-ready, we expect them to go into some form of education or training. What's your line in the sand here? You've talked double dissolution. Are you prepared to go to an election if you can't get this budget through? And is this a budget to take to an election? Fran, whenever the next election comes, the people will judge us on what we've done. And before the election, we said we'd stop the boats, we'd scrap the carbon tax, we'd build the roads of the 21st century, we'd get the budget back under control. This is precisely what we are doing. And I believe that we will be able to say to the people at the next election, whenever it is, and I expect it in the middle of 2016, we'll be able to say to the people, we said this is what we do. Uh, we've carefully, purposefully, methodically done it. Now it's in your hands. But you're not threatening, threatening a double dissolution over this budget? Uh, I am promising a strong and decisive government. That's what I'm promising. And I am confident... Uh, that the minor parties and the independents in the Senate will understand that we could not go on <clears throat> living the way we were. We could not go on mortgaging the future. Now, um, if they don't like what we're putting up, what are they going to put up as an alternative? Prime Minister, thank you very much for joining what us. What you thank haven't you explained friend. is how you can make one promise in one month mm -hmm. and then completely change it well, the next. Well, a, what, a, what happened in a, that a, month a, where you a, had this again, sudden again, explosion of vision? Well, well a, a, again, Kerry, um, people will make their own judgments about me. And if, if no, they... but, but I'd like you to explain yeah, it. Yeah. Well, you know, Tony, Tony Abbott feels with conviction yeah, yeah. we will not have a new tax. Yeah. In any way, shape or form, we won't have a new mm. tax. A month later, you do. Well... You know, again, Kerry, um, I, I, know, I know politicians are going to be judged on everything they say, um, but sometimes 
uh, in the heat of discussion, you go a little bit further uh, than you would uh, if it was an absolutely uh, calm, considered, prepared, scripted remark, which uh, is one of the reasons why um, the, 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 states, the statements that need to be taken absolutely um, as, as gospel truth is those carefully prepared, scripted remarks. So every time you make a statement, we have to ask you whether it's carefully no. prepared and scripted or yeah. whether it's just something yeah. on the fly. Look, look we, we no, can... No, seriously, this is a very no, serious but, question. But, but, but all, all of us, Kerry, all of us, um, when we're in the heat of verbal combat, so to speak, um, will sometimes say things that go a little bit further. Mr Abbott... We're not all leaders of major no, no, political and, parties and, and who are either Prime Minister true, or true, aspiring true, to be. True, true. And, and, and Would you agree that there is extra onus on you to right. be accurate absolutely and honest right. and make promises Ab that can be trusted? Ab absolutely right. But, but, but that time you couldn't. No, but, but the thing is, um, I, I made a statement in a radio interview in February, uh, and then I think in March uh, I made a commitment to paid parental leave. Now, Which was the opposite of what you'd said well, well, a month before. Well, it, it wasn't... Absolutely consistent with what I said the month it before. It was the opposite. I, 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 One month you say no new tax, no, okay. the next month you say a $2.7 okay. billion look, dollar tax. But, but th this is an argument that we could well have had in, in March, uh, and we did have it in March, uh, and a lot of people pointed out back then uh, that there was a bit of inconsistency, and, and, and I accept that. But, uh, but this business about, about uh, times when you're, what you say can be believed or trusted and times when we should except that it's not necessarily the truth. Well, well, but it, it makes it very hard for people. I mean, if, if we go back... If you gave an Andrew Ollie lecture, uh, that would obviously be the distilled essence of what Kerry O'Brien thinks on a particular issue. <laughs> but I'll issue. say again, but, but, I'm but, not aspiring to be the Prime no, no, Minister no, no. of Australia, but, but no matter I'm, what I'm, I say. But, I, I'm, but what you are saying is that the public no. are not going to know from one day to the next no. when you are saying something that's absolutely rock-solid and when it's not. Are there two Tony Abbotts, the real Tony Abbott and the Tony Abbott who tailors what he has to say to whatever audience he has in front of him. We've well, talked about, yeah. we've, I'll say this quickly, mm. we've talked about the time you mm. told the audience in a Victorian country town that the climate change argument was quite absolute crap. Mm -hmm. And then you told me later that you were just being loose with your language. It didn't represent my true position, you said. How are we to know when we're hearing your true position and when you're fudging the truth? I'm just... I, I mean, people will make their judgments of me, Kerry, and I accept that, and I understand that. And some of them will say, aha, he said this uh, in a radio interview in February, and then a month later in March, uh, he, ma he, he made a commitment on paid parental leave, which is not completely consistent with that no, former no. statement. It was the opposite. Some, 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 it was the opposite and, and, and of the some, first and statement, some, and, Mr. Some, and some people, Kerry will judge me very harshly but about that. I'd like that. to hear you acknowledge this. Yeah. It wasn't just a little bit different, it was the complete opposite. One was no new tax, the other was a new tax of $2.7 yeah. billion and, dollars and, within a month. And, and, and